Okay. So here we are. So we we heard this word topology uh, quite a few times since morning, and thanks for the speaker before me who already introduced. Uh, quantum hall in a way so that I'm not going to bore you too much but definitely I'm going to bring all of you together in the same platform as my understanding so let's say uh, we have we have heard since morning about all this kind of fancy states and how they behave but as an experimental physicist you know what my concern is let's say I know of a state which can have fancy quasi-particle in it, which can actually behave differently than the electrons that I know, but how I'm going to know that they are different. So often that can be electrical measurements because you know we can always measure currents and voltages and that can give us pretty much idea, you know, what it is. But that's really a good statement if the particles that is carrying the current or any other quantity in the system are charged. Let's say what happens if these fancy particles that we are talking about uh, in many of the fancy topologically protected state are actually charge neutral. Then measuring just charge current is not a good tool for us. Because, you know, we are experimentalists, as I said, I need to measure. I need to see if I see something. And there, uh, apart from the charge transport, we have seen that maybe measuring heat flow or energy flow in the system, which, you know, doesn't need to be necessarily, you know, depending on the charge of the material, uh, charge of the carrying particles, can be a good tool. And that exactly is the reason that uh, we pursued it and as I will go through my slides you will see why it can be a good tool. So I will be definitely using fractional quantum hall as my <coughs> playground. Why fractional quantum hall is just because that as I said that there can be different kinds of entities not only electrons but decorated quasi-particles that can behave differently or let's say the experiment will try to actually see if we can find things which are behaving differently into this kind of system. Okay, so the experiment that I'm going to talk about is just measuring thermal conductance. So before I go quantum or fractional particles, let's just put ourselves together like just quantifying like what is thermal conductance so we are aware of you know electrical conductance so I'm subjecting a, a conductor to a voltage gradient and their current flows and similarly if I subject it to a temperature gradient then there will be a thermal conductivity because of the heat flow and this is exactly what I'm going to measure it will be a two probe measurement of heat flow in such and such systems. So topological state of matter, like I already said, that this is a you know very recent uh, review, and this field is full of this kind of reviews, which just said that these are kind of, as I mentioned, fancy, fancy state of matter that can really give us something new to learn. And now, basically why I'm doing fractional quantum hall because of the fact that this is really a first known topological state of matter and it's very simple because electrons are confined in to the world and they often dress up as new entities and the emergent particles are often known as anions anions because they may follow any kinds of statistics not boson and fermionic uh, statistics particularly and these quasi particles are maybe neither boson or nor fermions, but that has not been proved yet experimentally so robust way. And, and a very good quality of this fractional quantum Hall system or this quantum Hall system is that this bulk, there is a bulk edge correspondence. So if there is something, let's say, is property of the bulk that gets reflected through the edges. And the edges in fractional quantum hall are basically conducting charge modes, which we can measure, thankfully, since centuries. 
So by just measuring the edge current, often we can also know about the insulating bulk. So in fractional quantum hull, or even quantum hull, the edge, edges are generally conducting the current and bulk is insulating. So what I'm going to do is going to measure charge current or fluctuation in charge current, thermal currents, and maybe interference of these kind of fancy particles that can arise due to interaction of uh, electrons. And that will give, a, give us a rather detailed picture of this you know, com com like complicated state of matter. The exchange statistics in truth, and, and why should we really interested in this kind of particles? Let's start with the particles that we know. So we know of these bosons in 3D or fermions in 3D. So bosons, we know that we exchange two particles, nothing changes there. In fermions, if we, ex you know, a particle goes around another particle or it exchange with another one, we know that it picks up a minus sign. But in general, in both the cases, if a particle goes around another particle, nothing really changes. But when we come to 2D, what makes this particle really special is now that they are restricted to really, you know, uh, moving only uh, 2D plane, but not having another Z direction to move around, they behave differently. And this way what happens that a particle, you know, like I'm just putting to the picture, if a particle goes around another particle, it picks up arbitrary phase and this brings out this name anions, like I said, any, uh, any phase. But eventually what happens that if a particle goes around another, any number of particles, eventually it will be just adding up the phases that they have. So it doesn't matter in which order they are just taking turns. But this is a simple scenario. So if we have this kind of particles that, you know, in which order they are taking turns of how many number of particles in this 2D plane, it doesn't matter. So they are this abelian particles that we know of. They are simple. And there is rather complicated kind of particle that we explain, like, you know, expect to see in this kind of system known as this non abelian particles. Be because of their ground state degeneracies, when they go around each other, it, it basically end up in two different and multiple different states depending on, you know, what was the order of these exchanges. And particularly, these kind of particles are interesting. Maybe a fancy name that you guys are all known of. It's an all know of. This is Majorana or Parafermions. So these Majorana or Parafermions fall in this kind of this kind of uh, category. And all I'm going to convince you through the, throughout my talk and by the end of my talk is that this measurement of heat flow can be a good tool to really differentiate if there is presence of any non-abelian uh, entity uh, in the system. So again, my main platform will be fractional quantum hall. And the reason for quantum hall will be just accessing this 1D ballistic, uh, you know, edge modes, which carry all these fractional charges because of this interacting 2D electron gas. And study of anionic Hausi particles basically is already done for now it's almost 35 years. So we know that they are fractionally charged, there are neutral quasi particles and as I said there can be abelian and non-abelian quantities, eh, particles. So the bulk is insulating, there is bulk edge correspondence. So just to study the bulk you can just study edge and you will have a good picture of the bulk which is insulating and often can host this kind of uh, topological uh, quasi-particles. So we study transport around the edge. So again, I'm not going to go through too many details, but to the electron gas when subjected to high magnetic field, basically have this kind of edge modes running around, which carries the current, as I said. And then there are this picture of the Landau level, like basically by changing the magnetic field, you can take this, uh, you know, through the various Landau levels. 
And these edge modes are really very special because not they are only ballistic, they, they have quantized conductance. And this was the first time that, you know, almost 40 years back, it was discovered in silicon and uh, you can see there are plateaus which are, you know, normal Hall effect doesn't have plateaus, but in quantum Hall, uh, we saw plateaus which were special and then we tried understanding them and that's why it eventually came out to be this topologically protected state in fractional quantum Hall, etc. But what I want you to re remember that there are these RxX, namely the longitudinal resistances is zero. And the bulk of the quasi particle, uh, bulk is localized, bulk has localized quasi particles. That is another important thing. Anyway, with time, what happens that as you go to lower and lower temperature, go to better and better samples, you see it's not only, so the initial in integer quantum Hall effect could have been just explained through Landau levels of electrons. But as you go to lower temperature, high magnetic field, you see that there is like uh, resistance which is quantized to one third electron charge. And that kind of tells you that, oh, I can now have quasi particles which have charge which is less than electron. So this kind of experimental evidence led to the explanation, sorry, excuse me. So this was the first time that people have seen, you know, plateaus with uh, fractional charge and there was soon an interpretation that how can we picture this kind of fractionalized plateau, plateaus in terms of electrons and flux quantas. And so far so good, let's say, and as you know, the, the time goes by and you have better, sim better samples, better situations and you can see that there is zoo of such fractional states which can tell you, okay, there are strong interaction and there are different kinds of quasi-particle that, that, that is available there. And uh, the main thing here I want to really, want you to really focus on that there is some dip in the Rx6 here in at nu equals to half where there was no plateau. So the picture that basically satisfies uh, is known as uh, satisfies this thing is uh, known as composite fermion where two electron one electron is attached to two flux quantas and then you can have then you can have Landau levels of these composite fermions which effectively explains most of all these fractions and then finally there was there was this uh, puzzle which came out that you will see that all of the fraction have basically denominator which are odd, but there was this denominator five, like the even denominator state five have, which came, you know, kind of 30 years back. The people saw that there is a state which is definitely, you know, having a plateau there. You can think about there is a gap state. But because it's even denominator state, people didn't know how to explain this. But eventually, of course, it's unexpected. But as, and they thought maybe, you know, just a kink, because often experiments are showing some data, and maybe it's not real and it will go with time. But no, as you improve, you see things are improving. And yes, exactly, there was a plateau in better samples and stuff like that. And then you understand that, okay, so that means this is a true picture that I'm going to have a plateau in uh, five half, and then think of an explanation that how can I have an even denominator, uh, you know, state while Laughlin has explained all the odd denominators in terms of this uh, quasi composite fermions, if you can say. This is a picture by Jane. So, the picture, as I said, that for composite fermion is as if like two flux quantas are attached per, per electron so that you can just effectively put this magnetic field to zero. And this is like symmetric, so Shubnikov-Dihas basically gives you the 
feeling that maybe this effective field here is zero and that's how particles are behaving. And then Moore came, came out with this theory of like how two composite fermions can actually have a state which is similar to a P-wave superconductor and that can explain this 5 half gap. So eventually what, what, are, what they want to say is like basically it can be a metal or a superconductor or any exotic phase. And the super, why superconductor? Because Rxx was zero. So long residual <coughs> resistance is zero. You have a gap. You can think of a superconductor. And this can be a P-wave superconductor. Why? Because, you know, because of the structure that we think. So Moore came with this theory that maybe it's a BCS polarized state of composite fermion. And this P-wave Cooper pair kind of generated the idea of this non-abelian state like Majorana fermions. And, you know, as you think, uh, as you maybe know more, know that uh, Majorana is a, you know, zero energy state and stuff like that, and it's a neutral particle, how can we, how can we really realize in a system? So basically, this is just a pictorial representation that how more read Fafian order is explained in case of a quantum all 5 half state. So basically, the edges are running where there's charge and there is this Majorana excitation going on, Majorana mode along with this charge, the fractional charge. And similarly, also in the bulk, there is inside the vortices, there are Majorana anions there. And which, if, if present, should be non-abelian entity. Now, for the fractional quantum Hall state, as, as I already said, that they are predicted to host, you know, fractionally charged quasi-particles, fractional charges have been measured through short noises and etc. and it has been proved. But unusual fractional statistics have never been proved and neither I'm saying that I'm going to prove fractional statistics here. So most of the experimental probes, as I said, are sensitive to charge. And non-abelian particles are often, as I said, charge neutral and thermal, thermal transport may distinguish, distinguish between this non-abelian and the abelian order. So first of all, let me just jot down what do we know before jumping into this experiment about the 1D ballistic channel and quantum limit of heat flow. So there was long time back, Sir John Penry suggested that this heat flow in 1D ballistic channel is universal for bosons and fermions. So namely, it doesn't matter if it's a ballistic channel, if the heat is taken by bosons or fermions, it should be quantized to, you know, the limit. Maybe I must mention this is the upper limit of the heat flow. So it doesn't really depend on the particle statistics. And then Ken and Fisher, after quite a while, took this work you know, farther, and they proved that even for abelian anions, namely for fractional charges, it should not be different either from bosons or fermions. So let's say all this Laughlin state that I said, that, you know, we have these odd denominator states that, you know, uh, are normal anions that I said, the abelian states, they should also behave as if they are bosons or fermions. And then, this was, this was not proved, let's say it was predicted 20 years back. And for non-abelian anions, if present in the system, I will be just talking about Majorana, like I said, because I, I would focus on 5 half state, which is supposed to host some Majorana particle. If present in the system, then the thermal conductance should be a half integer quantum. Of, like the prefactor should be a half integer. Okay, now why half? Because of the fact that Majorana is thought of naively, I can tell you, a half of an electron. If it will be a parafermion, it will be fractional, but the number will not be half. So technically, if there is any non-abelian entity present, the quantization will not be unity, like the, the prefactor will not be unity or, you know, integer multiples, but will be fractionals. And that's the clue that we had to pursue this experiment, okay? 
So experimental evidences, of course, as I said, like we were not the first one to measure even thermal conductance. So there were, it was done before in phonons and photons, and it was proved Penry right that bosons and eventually the like uh, this was our this particular work uh, in integer, integer con uh, quantum hall basically uh, motivated us for further uh, study. So all this works has been done and has been proved that yes, bosons and fermions doesn't be, you know don't behave different when it comes to heat flow in ballistic 1D regime. And I'm repeating myself about this ballistic 1D regime because I'm not talking about 2D limit, a 2D, 2D uh, transport of heat. I'm talking about 1D ballistic flow of heat. And then it doesn't really depend on bosons or fermions, it behaves similar. And this, as I said, was our motivation for our work. And now I would just explain to you uh, the working principle of the device, okay? So as you are going to me measure heat flow, so definitely heat has to flow. So there will be a hot reservoir, which will be, of course, to a high temperature. There will be a cold reservoir, which will cool down the uh, other side of the conductor. And there will be this conductor, which will be conducting heat from hot to cold. And as I am, you know, a solid state physicist, I, I am in, you know, solid state system. I will definitely have some phonon into the system that will also dissipate. So basically there are electron phonon interaction which will take some heat out of the reservoir for sure. Right? I'm not completely isolated. And this electron phonon interaction kind of goes as t to the power 5. But let's say how, okay, now another thing that uh, quantum hall that I'm talking to you, it's uh, we see in a very low temperature, in millikelvin temperature inside the fridge. So how do we heat this metal that if I want to heat something? Cooling down is simple because I can just, you know, put it, uh, short it to my fridge temperature and it will be cold. So we kind of dissipate power. And this power dissipation depends in our hand because we cannot, we, it, it's just dual heating, you know. You have a resistor, you pass current and it heats up. That's, that's, the, that's the picture. So if I know how much power I dissipated, and I know that, you know, this total power has to be dissipated either by the electron phonon interaction or this has to be, the heat should be transferred from between the hot to the cold reservoir through this electronic or quasi-particle channel that we will be having. Now for this 1D, uh, 1D channel, we are relying on quantum hall because quantum hall gives us ballistic edge modes which are 1D in nature. So that's the reason that we use platform which is fractional quantum hall. It gives us, you know, zoo of particles to study and also ballistic 1D limit. Okay, and in the experiment we only measure temperature, namely nothing else but only temperature and the electron temperature of the grounding contacts, namely the ground contacts means the cold reservoir in the picture that I showed. So I have to know the temperature Tm, which is the highest temperature, let's say there's this hot reservoir temperature, there's this cold reservoir temperature, and this is what we measure in the experiment. And delta P is the dissipated power, as I said. Like we dissipate power because, you know, it's a, it's a dilution refrigerator. You cannot just go and, you know, light some fire there. So we have to use some batteries and stuff. So the control only we have is basically, if you remember the slide, the number that we want to measure is one picowatt. It's a very small number per Kelvin. So measuring a small number needs us to be very, very precise in measuring how much power that we are dissipating and how good we can actually measure these temperatures. So technically we can get rid of beta, how, how I will tell you soon. But eventually we want to really extract what is K. So, you know, by measuring Tm and T0 and knowing delta P, we are only left with one parameter. So we have to really do a good job by just measuring and knowing what we know about the system. For small temperature, you can all guess that we can just think about this term doesn't exist and only it's this and that will be a good approximation. Anyhow, so this is a device geometry. 
maybe many of you are theorists here so i'm not going to daze you with the details of the device but it just to it's it's just to have a control of heat flow through this so as i mentioned there's a hot reservoir the central metal island that you see is this is the hot reservoir for me so by flowing current inside i'm heating this small metal up <coughs> and that in turn heats up all my edge modes that i depict by all the green arrows and the temperature of these green arrows like or green edge modes is what i measure through these detectors that's all i do okay and if you if you think it's too complicated just know that it follows simple kirchhoff's law it's a simple circuit of quantum hall resistors all connected to a single point which i can heat to different temperature as i wish there's nothing fancy about it trust me on this and i'm not as i said there must be many theoreticians i don't want to daze you with the you know kind of uh, details of this thing so all you want to control the number of channels which gets in and out of this small reservoir and by doing that you can eventually extract what a single channel is taking in or out and that's what we are looking for and all we are going to do is going to go to different filling factors namely different states of fractional quantum hall effect to change the particles that actually takes the heat in and out of the system and to see if they behave differently or similarly and that's about it as i said it's a simple circuit it has nothing fancy and all i measure is as simple as this so i i give some dc current and i measure the fluctuation in the current okay and this noise which is thermal noise because you know i have of course i'm not telling you that i am not supposed to introduce any additional noise in the system because noise is the thermometer i'm using for my measurements so i measure fluctuation in current or the noise and this gives me the you know idea of the temperature in the system and hence i'm not supposed to add any extra noise from outside or even create in the device additionally okay so that that is a background for the experimental preparation and on top of it whatever i measure is this extra noise which definitely is proportional to the temperature of the system because this is just simple johnson nyquist and now as i said you know in my device the only thing i do is i just modulate the number of channels which is taking in and out the heat so you know i can have two channels taking the heat out i can have five channels taking the heat out and i just want to show you here two you know standard data set just to show you that you know how does this two graph changes like how this graph changes as you change the number of channels okay so you go to the same power as you have less number of modes here you go to higher temperature while if you have too much too many channels to dissipate heat of course it goes to a lower temperature okay but why we want to do multiple you know channels because now if we subtract these two at this one same temperature that will get rid of the phonon term because phonon doesn't depend on you know how many channels are present there because the phonon that i'm talking about it's mostly the reservoir that the small ohmic contact that i had in the center uh, the electron phonon interaction there particularly okay so if i can take multiple of such data which i took and then i you know i can take differences etc and that eventually get rid of this phonon term and sorry that get, get rid of this phonon term and as i measure you know tm and t0 so i measure these two quantities this j total is the dissipated power that i have for the system this is the only prefactor is what i want to measure sorry for uh, dropping here a prefactor which can be just uh, delta n we can write okay so that's what we are trying to uh, get out of this data now as i said that kenan fisher said that for one channel of composite fermion which is like you know this uh, let's say e over three charge it should be similar to electrons 
which should be like one unit of kappa naught, which is basically this uh, perfect um, number, because it was, if you paid attention, there was the all, all uh, natural constants. And this is what we measure. So if you see the slope, the slope, basically this, this y-axis, uh, I just, you know, named it something, but it's basically is a normalized uh, to the number of uh, mode that you have. And the slope will give you what is the prefactor of the unit of thermal conductance that you should have. So here for one third state, like nu equals to one third, we see that the slope is very close to one. Which for experimentalists, we are really happy because this is, uh, you know, this is a good agreement. So, so far so good, as Kenneth Fisher said, that, you know, if it's a abelian anion, it should not behave differently than uh, electron or, of, uh, you know, bosons and stuff like that. And then we go to more complex states. Why we go to more complex state? Not just because it's freely available for fractional quantum hall, because yes, if I go to fractional quantum hall states, I will get, you know, zoo of power states, as you said, and it's really good to do experiments in all of them because, you know, somebody has to do one day and you can publish, but our motivation was, no, you know, it's often that, but the point is at the end of the day, you should have a better motivation. And our motivation was this, that we knew, like, you know, because as I said, quantum hall is now a 40 year old uh, subject, a field. So we know that the states between half and nu equals to one, so filling factor one to <coughs> filling factor half, there are several states like two thirds, three fifths, four seventh, and more, which I'm not saying here. They have been basically experimentally proved to have some neutral modes alongside the charge modes. And these neutral modes are basically what motivated us because these neutral modes that are present in this kind of states are supposed to be bosonic neutral modes. They should not be, yes. Can go to the previous slide? Yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, when you measure the uh, heat flow in the 1D channel, are you uh, involving both edges or only uh, one edge? So basically, you know, it's heat is always going from hot to cold. Hot, uh, so the both edges comes exactly when I'm going there. So if you go to this complex, uh, you know, uh, news, like two third, three, uh, three fifth and stuff like that, where there is counter propagating edges, then you need to actually think about both because otherwise think about it, right. it's uh, chiral. So it doesn't matter when cold edge is coming to the reservoir because yes. I'm measuring the in equilibrium. The, uh, in this experiment on new one third, yeah. uh, you know, is the other, part of the edging, uh, no, did you, uh, Yeah, so the other part of the, so it's basically chiral. So let's say one third, we have this picture for long, you know, uh, length of the sample. We imagine there is only one edge, which is going down, going down from left to right, let's say. And let's say my left is hot yeah. and my right is cold. Yeah. And what is going on the other side, it's cold to hot. So that is okay. definitely not taking heat out. But, you, but you're, not, you're not doing anything to the other part of the edge. No, 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 no. I'm not. Actually, uh, if, if you remember that my device is too pro, so I'm shorting okay. in either side. Like my both edges are shorted. So they, they are connected to the same contact. Uh -huh. I'm not doing anything because it's a two probe device. Two probe device. Okay. Yes. I will be considering them for sure in two, okay. two third and three fifth okay. and stuff okay. like that. Yeah. So, uh, of course, I already said about this kind of, uh, they have upstream neutral mode. The upstream is the extra, extra information here. Upstream means the downstream is what, you know, goes from your higher mu to lower mu, higher chemical potential to lower chemical potential. But these kind of, these states, they have proved experimentally to host, you know, upstream edge modes. Namely, it's going on the opposite side opposite direction from lower chemical potential to the higher chemical potential. And often has like an experimental proofs are there that they are gen in general neutral modes. And as I said that these neutral modes are bosonic. And if we really want to distinguish about charged and neutral cases and Majorana being a neutral uh, particle, we really wanted to have <coughs> situations where things like where it was not supposed to be a non-abelian state and yet we have some 
uh, you know, neutral entities so that we can calibrate ourselves. Okay, so that's that's a good calibration for ourselves. That yes, there are neutral modes known. Let's see how they behave. Okay, and in this case, as you see, there are counter propagating edge modes. Uh, Kenan Fisher kind of suggested what should be the number. Now the numbers are, as you can see, it's zero, minus one, minus two. So zero because you know it's like there is equal and opposite. But this picture, this number is going to be true only in thermodynamic limit. Namely, you know, if it's a small sample, it's never going to mix so well. So what it suggests basically that whatever heat this will bring, the other will return. And that's the reason the conductance is zero. But this is true for a long thermo, you know, long sample, namely thermodynamic limit, for that matter. And in this case, as you said, like in this case, both the edges will be important because then in either edge you will have heat carrying modes, and, and that's that's what we want to look at. And do not do not be you know like uh, feel weird that why there is negative because that means oh heat is going from the cold to hot. No, it's not. It's basically because of the fact that the quantum hall has you know chiral edge modes, so there is the edge modes are continuing. So whatever is in the let's say now we have a two probe device so both the edges are like you know like exactly opposite so whatever is carrying heat from the bottom edge let's say this is the bottom edge let's say and whatever is carrying heat so here this edge is heat, carrying heat and these two are coming from the cold side but on the opposite side of the the mesa these two will be carrying the heat and this will be the cold one so basically Whenever it's negative, all it says it's the other edge which is conducting the heat, not this bottom edge. Namely, it's not carried by the mu greater than uh, like zero side to, you know, mu goes to zero side, but the other other side. That's that's all the negative is about. If I'm basically making you a bit puzzled, uh, you can ask me question later. In any case, in my device, because it's two probe, I'm only going to measure the you know, the modulus. So, so yes. That that when it's negative, uh, the charge current is uh, going from one part of the edge, while the heat current is flowing yes, from the other yes, part Yes, 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 exactly, exactly. So sort of a charge heat separation. Yes, in a way, yeah. Uh, okay, so why two thirds should be zero? Like, as I just briefly mentioned, that, you know, you have an edge which takes the heat out, but then there is another edge which takes the heat back. So basically, if there is, you know, interaction between these two edges, which, you know, which was, uh, I'm not going into all the details why it is there, but it is there, and that's the reason that you eventually mix up stuff and can end up with uh, zero thermal conductance. And as I mentioned, this zero will only result from the full equilibration and large length of the sample, so that the all emitted heat is returned only then it will be zero. If the equilibration is not full, then you will not see zero, okay? Then this is the result. So this is the result for four seven, three fifth, and this is the result for two third. Two third, we should, we should see zero, but we don't see zero. So I only want to say that for four seven and three fifth, we are close to the quantization that we're supposed to see, which tells us that yes, neutral modes, at least in these states, behave exactly like, you know, the electrons or the bosons that they should behave like, like exactly Ken and Fisher said, but in case of two-third, we end up being not zero, not only not zero, just look at the number, it's almost one-third, you know, it looks like magic, it's two-third state and heat is quantized to one-third, you know, we are experimentalists, but we think, okay, that, that has a ring, okay, so you, you now question, maybe, maybe it was not right, maybe, maybe all this Majorana, you don't need Majorana, even having a normal neutral mode, you can have fractional uh, heat conductance. And then we wanted to dig in more, so I could not uh, change the length of that particular sample, but what, can I, what I can do, I can always increase the heat, the uh, temperature, the temperature of the lower, you know, the cold resorber, basically. 
And if it is a quantized quantity in one third of that kappa naught, it's a God-given number, it should not change, right? That's what topology tells us. Like, it should not change. The thermal, you know, quantum hall doesn't change its conductivity because you change 20 millikelvin temperature, right? So it should not change, but it changed. And uh, when we started doing this measurement, of course, we were not as smart, but later on we, un we figured out that why it is like this, because exactly there was not full equilibration. So the sample length was not enough to equilibrate for this two-third equal and opposite heat carrying. So that's, that's what explains this picture. And if any of you is interested, I can go into details. And here I will just touch upon it. So we kind of got a very, very, you know, hand-waving theory for it. That if we can just think of some interaction that, you know, you exchange the heat between two edges. And in case of two-third, it's a special case because you have equal and opposite. And because it's equal and opposite, you need longer length in order to really return all the heat. Because, you know, as, as you increase the length of the edge, all, there is a possibility all the heat will return. But if it's not equilibrated completely for the given length of the sample that we have, all, all heat doesn't get back. And that's why you have some conductivity of heat. Okay? And for 3 fifth or 4 seventh, why it was ideal and followed Ken and Fisher is just because now you have more number of edges. So basically, what does that mean? That means that you have putting a weightage on in a certain side. And that's the reason for 3 fifth and 4 seventh, uh, 4 seventh, what happened that these numbers are not same. They are not like two thirds all are 1, 1. It was in case of 3 fifth, it was 2 as opposed to 1. In case of 4 seventh, it was 3 opposed to 1. So, you know, that's why you, you can explain, explain their equilibration faster. And this is the, the model that we think you have question. Higher temperature data for the So we, I, I took only for, uh, for 3 fifth? Uh, 2 thirds. Yeah, 2 third. I took only until you only go to 30, 30 right? yes, because but, but the energy gap for 2 thirds is quite high, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. The reason we don't go, if you remember, again, we are measuring a number which is 1 picowatt. Yeah. And the reason for not going to very high temperature is this, because then the phonon time will be relevant. And I'm going to subtract, you know, I told you, like, my experiment is like, you know, I'm subtracting two cars in order to get rid of phonon. So I will be subtracting two small numbers which are close by to get another small number. So the more you go to higher and higher temperature, the electron phonon interaction takes over. And I want it to be in a regime where, you know, uh, it's that I do not really phase out my entire measurement. Nothing else. Like I, I did also in 40 millikelvin. I just didn't put the data because A, it was going down. <coughs> But as I said, the data was really, you know, it was trained. And you will just tell me, you know, how, how, you, how you are just uh, drawing this conclusion. So that's the reason we, we stop here. So is it possible for, for your data to just match the electron phonon interaction in this temperature range? So at what temperature the electron phonon interaction is? Uh, so we have seen from all our data, it's like, you know, after 40 millikelvin, that's what we have seen. Like, I've shown also in the data, you can see it's really bending. And, but, you know, this bending is only after because it also depends on T0. As I increase the T0, it starts even to, to start with the bends a lot. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the reason, nothing else. Like, you can always subtract and there will be always difference, but it's a very small number. So the accuracy will suffer. That's all, nothing else, yeah. So this is basically the model that we had and we could plot and we can see that, you know, we just wanted to see if, if it will be forced uh, for all these states, given a certain length of the sample, how the conductance will be converging to the ideal quantized value. And we see, yes, for 4, 7, and 3, 5, it goes faster than 2, 3. And like I said, two thirds is a special, a special case because you have equal and opposite, you know, heat carrying or cold uh, edge modes. That's all. Okay. So, what this graph tells us, it tells us 
not only that you know the Kenan Fisher was right, but also if we have bosonic neutral modes, they will be carrying equal amount of heat as electrons. This was a good information for us because we really want to look forward to some other kinds of neutral mode in the system, if at all possible. Okay, so this is so far was the summary. And now, what do we know about 5 half state? I think I told you guys already that 5 half was the first known, you know, different state. But I didn't tell you that uh, already there were measurements of the charge. So, okay, so basically, uh, Murid and similar kind of uh, uh, wave functions predict that the charge should be over 4 like the excitation should be, fractional excitation should be over 4. It was measured ex experimentally. Also, there are states or wave function that explains that it should have upstream neutral mode. And when I say this upstream neutral mode, that can be bosonic neutral modes as well. And it should be a spin polarized case because, you know, it's a moderately high magnetic field that we saw this kind of states. That's why it should be spin polarized. And all these things have been actually seen in experiments. But as you always know, for experimentalists, you know, we do everything, but then hmm, there is another question. Nobody says there is Majorana. You see? So, okay. Cannot, you know, uh, Moore Reed said, you should see these, these, these. You see them. Hmm. Do you see Majorana? Hmm. I don't know. So, it's still, you know, that, that's, that's the question we are fighting. Because it's not that we are just writing stuff and we are thinking, ah, we, we should have. It's like, we should have, we could have, do you have? <laughs> that's, that's the question for us, okay? So, it's not me, you know, who's doing this. It's like all of us in this field are like this. So, yeah, there are piles of stuff, but hmm, yet non-abelian or non-abelian, non we don't know. And here comes our measurement because, uh, to tell you the truth, if this, fa if this fails, then of course maybe um, uh, it's really non non abelian. It's a abelian state. Sorry. So the five have were studied at some point of time quite rigorously because it was really exciting and was first time experimental condensed matter system that you you can see this kind of you know possibility of Majorana modes, which can be I don't know doing so many things. So there are people who are really ambitious and they thought, okay, Majorana can exist. And they suggested this kind of wave function for this, uh, like states. Uh, I'm just giving the edge modes according to their theory. And then there are people, they think, well, all these things can be true, but without Majorana as well. And that's a good thing. Like I said, you know, this is what happens in experiment. You know, you, you see a peak, but then what it is, you never know. So. You see, so there are like nine different possibilities and thank goodness that there is some quantity that differs and this is this thermal conductivity. So the thermal conductivity measurement should be a good tool. I cannot tell you that yet, yet I finished the puzzle, but yeah, it's somewhere there, you know, we are closing. So anyhow, so the point is eventually if you measure something like this integer, you are, you are good, you don't have Majorana, you can go home, start up fresh. And if you land here, okay, it's a good idea. Maybe we can do better, but yet not sure. So, let's see what do we get in experiments. Of course, we are experimentalists, we cannot get lucky. It just doesn't happen. So you measure, you start measuring, you know, and you see a number which is, by the way, first of all, this 2.5 is not a good number. Liang knows about it. Uh, he will tell that pH Fafian is not a good number. But, <laughs> but the point is, we were thinking of uh, anti Fafian, which, which should be 1.5. To start with, my heart was broken. So I'm like, okay, never mind, you know, something. And then you go to lower and lower temperature, you see this number is rising. As if it's pushing itself to three, I was like, better once and for all things will be done you know you don't you don't say anymore marana no marana whatever you have this is what you have so but you know we are also a bit uh, i don't know greedy so we, we still want to you know 
I don't know, maybe. So these are these are the numbers that you measure. I couldn't go lower in electron. Why? When I say T zero, you know, this is the electron temperature that I have. My fridge was four millikelvin, but pushing electron temperature to ten millikelvin is already good enough. I mean, like maybe many of you can be do, doing better than me, but I was like, you know, enough of problem, and this was not going below ten millikelvin ever. But anyhow, whatever it is, it's nowhere good. It's just not good. It's something fraction, but I don't know, you know. But I was still thinking, how can I push it uh, towards any conclusion? And uh, then my supervisor kind of likes to plot it, sorry, plots it like this, you know. See, we are approaching somewhere. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not an integer. And if anything, it's very close to a half integer. So this is the, this is the only positive outcome that we have. But uh, let me say this, that maybe we are not uh, completely being ready here. Our experience with two thirds told us that equilibration in this kind of cases are not so simple. And um, they can be often uh, a bit complicated. And given that if we really think that there can be a possibility of having a Marana edge mode running around, that should not have the similar kind of uh, Fermi velocity as the other edge modes and stuff like that. So that makes, uh, uh, you know, a case that maybe we should see some discrepancy, but I must admit I was really disheartened, you know, as we are, we are measuring for edges and nothing comes out. Yes, I... Do you have any data for seven half? Seven half actually, the RX6 was not completely zero for me. And uh, it was very close to four that I measured. And uh, the reason for RX6 zero is important for us because as I said, you know, we are measuring in a certain way and we, we may lose signal which, which can give us wrong result. So what's the entry cap for seven half? I think this one was uh, 220 uh, millikelvin. I think seven half was even lower. Like uh, the plateau was, you know, very narrow and the RX6 was never zero. It was like eight third for me. It's like eight third has, has also the similar problem. So if for any of you it's uh, a bit puzzling, what we are talking about is like, you know, in the measurement that I'm doing here, I wanted all the heat to be carried by the edge modes because, you know, I made a, made a statement that I'm only giving you information about 1D ballistic uh, edge modes and they are they are necessity in my case because I can only talk about 1D ballistic mode because the energy is quantized there. But if I have some longitudinal resistance, which means that I have some backscattering that tells you that heat can be lost from the bulk to the ground by, by various means, it doesn't necessarily have to go through this edge modes. And for my measurement to be you know, technically right, I have to have a situation where I know all the current is taken by the edge modes, so that that's the that's the noise that I'm measuring. Okay. So here we are. Maybe very positive to think that we maybe somewhere have uh, nailed the point that yes, maybe this is a system in condensed matter that we can have Majorana uh, modes, which behave differently than other particles that we have seen so far, but yet I cannot tell you that I have proved, uh, you know, non abelian statistics or something, like I always say, you know, you do something, but something is remaining. So we have to still braid them in order to see if, uh, if they are really good enough for what they are thought to be and that we are after them. So the state, the number that I show here, I just I must admit that they are not the favorite of the theoreticians because uh, for the people who worked a lot on these kind of states in order to understand them because particle hole symmetric Fafian should not have some gap and um, that's that's the argument for that but you know somehow experiment goes there and you know I have no no hands on them in two different kinds of devices we saw this kind of similar results so I stand by my results but I would be happy if somebody can prove me wrong or right so you're welcome
And uh, as I said that, you know, there are many theoretical uh, possibilities. Uh, our previous speaker also, I'm thankful to him, he also published a paper, you know, just explaining that, yes, weird things can happen and can be explained. And the picture can be that, so there are this moon read basically gave a picture of Fapian and there can be an anti-Fapian picture, you know, just the whole picture of that. Let's say if Fapian is a particle picture, you have a whole picture and you can have this particle whole puddles next to each other which can give you effective pH Fapian which, is, which may look like a pH Fapian order. But actually it's a mixture of all this particle and Fapian and anti-Fapian state. But my favorite theory is uh, Steve Simon, he says maybe it's an equilibration issue and uh, maybe it is and in, like now I'm not in Weizmann, by the way, this work was done in Weizmann, these are my collaborators, uh, these are the theory, theory collaborators who taught me a lot about, you know, how to deal with data and when to face the world and, you know, justify what you see and this is my mentor and um, He's very optimistic. He's way more optimistic than I am. <laughs> and <laughs> he is continuing. So there is a, so I'm currently in uh, Colombia, you know, starting to think about twisted graphene and stuff like that. So <laughs> <laughs> things, things move on, right? It's like, you, you have to move on. It's like, my Marana, it's good, but maybe I have to twist and turn stuff because you never know. You never know. Uh, so, they are, they are actually continuing work on two-thirds because we really want to understand the equilibration process. Namely, you know, you, you have uh, counter-propagating edge modes and, um, and I would say, I mean, definitely graphene is uh, very, very interesting because, like people say, they are very accessible to everybody. But I love personally gallium arsenide because of its stability. Because, you know, if, if I am really happily sharing my result to, today with you, which is not a simple experiment and it's, it has been done to great, great details and the numbers that I'm quoting are small, yet I'm confident because of the system. Because it is a very stable system and tried and tested. And uh, hence all I will say that I, I believe in what I got and I will be happy if somebody proves me wrong or right. And uh, that's it. Have any question I will be happy to answer. Please. Yeah, we know that uh, at the high pass feeling uh, in your sample, the fog uh, is thermally insulating. Yes, so basically in, in the 5 half sample, like you want to know if the bulk fog, was... Yeah, yeah. so, so basically what we, what we try to do, as I said, the RxX is one thing that we try to see if the longitudinal resistance. That, that tells about the charge conductance. Yes, and also we try to measure, you know, this upstream neutral mode to short distances to see if I see something. And we saw, you know, like uh, upstream neutral mode for short distances, not for long distances. Yeah, this kind of, I, I just didn't say because, you know, for people, they will not care. Yes, yes, we did this kind of checks for sure. Yeah. 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 Um, so, so I heard some proposals saying that disorder may stabilize one phase or the other. So yeah. you tried samples with different uh, qualities? Yes, so basically uh, we did, so initial, my initial result was on the SPSS structure which is the old canonical structure. So from our lab where in this similar structure we measured E over 4 and neutral mode etc. But uh, this was like also got 2.4, 2.45 something like this. And then, we, but the problem was, uh, with this structure was that it has uh, heat conductance to the bulk that we guess because when we took differences, it was good, like all these graphs, but individual number gave us some additional numbers. You see what I mean? Like I should have three channels, let's say three times kappa naught is what I should measure, but I saw six. And this number constant was added to all the number of channels that I can have. So, and, and all these measurements that we used to do for fraction, we first do it in filling factor 2 because, you know, filling factor 2 and 3 because we want 
want to excuse me we want to make sure that integer really falls in right place so for SPSL structure that we that is what we saw we saw that uh, there is some additional heat conductance alongside with the number of edges which if you subtract you know because I'm subtracting at the end of the day for n channels and n plus two channels let's say but n ten for n channels I do not measure n I measure n plus something which I also measure from n plus two plus that something and then we go to this uh, other structure which is just dx center but either side and uh, of course it's, its mobility is low it's 20 million in the, in, from 35 million but we got similar kind of result but not the extra excess heat conductivity yes we, we tried and I definitely measured more samples than this but you know yeah uh, any other question you you had some question yeah. so, uh, did you check the all the pair of point and point, point contact for the uh, current flow because you need to control all your uh, point and point contact to control the uh, edge flow. So here, what we do, you know, generally use the quantum point contact to close or open. Right. So for fractions, we do not uh, manipulate them. For five FI, what I did, I did you know two and one and the entire. But not, not never, never in between because we don't want to. Like I said, you know, if you have partial transmission of the QPCs, you yeah. will add noise, yeah. which I don't want. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, sure. Uh, if I understand correctly, so uh, all, all the measurements are marrying the two terminal. Yes. Uh, yes. Is it possible to measure directly the thermal high in the future? Yes, you can do. So basically, you can put QPCs and do it. But you know, to start with, this was good enough uh, to even push there. Trust me, it was. Uh, I hope you get the picture that it's very easy experiment, but it is not. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, in these two terminal measurements, uh, when you have a temperature a difference between the two. Uh, Terminals. Yeah. Uh, you're measuring the heat current. Uh, is there also a charge current? Between Always. Them? Always. So, so basically, you know, I do not measure the heat current. I just measure the temperature and model it into, you know, if this much power dissipation flows how how it should be. So, namely, you know, the equilibration temperature is what I'm measuring, which right. in term is like heat, but charge, of course, because you know it's quantum Hall, so I have the Rh. That's that's the that's the electrical circuit for me. So my electrical circuit is very simple. It's the R hall of that particular new connected to a single point, which is this reservoir which heats up. Right. That's all. Yeah, I'm not measuring heat flow in that sense. I am I am mesh. I know how much power I'm dissipating. Right and how much the temperature is rising because that that comes out of the equilibration of in and out of the heat right like the the edges are going in and out and i'm measuring the equilibration temperature of that reservoir because you know i'm i'm measuring far the fluctuation which is 4 kbtr the, yeah. the dissipated power yeah uh, how is that how is that measured oh so that's basically so i as i said it's a simple kirchhoff's law you know i have all the rh combination and i put some DC current and I know how much you can calculate if you yes yeah yeah, yeah. I can show sure. you check the contact resistance so, so let you know the power uh, so I don't check I don't have to check the contact resistance but of course what we check is that if I send current if I'm getting as much current as I'm supposed to get in all the terminals because this equal branching of the current is very much important because this small reservoir is supposed to have zero resistance to all the edges that is going in and out of it. It should be an ideal ohmic contact, but not too big because if it's too big, I will have a huge electron phonon turn. If it's too small, the edge will go in and out, not equilibrate. So there is a sweet spot, you know, you have to have a right size, which still give you a good ohmic contact. Yeah. And a good thermal reservoir. Yes. When you know, when you say you put one peak of work, how can you know it's one or it's one? Oh no no, this is like as I said, you know. So what kind of check is what what are, what kind of check that you can do is if this is an ideal contact or not. If it's not an ideal contact and it reflects back some current, you push some current. There will be one terminal you will get more current. 
because you know it's quantum hall and i have both the edges together so yeah there are tricks like if you are interested i can this is what first of all we have to do and if i don't do this i will get a wrong result and that explains later on why i didn't get that so yes we always check for it so you in so it's it's really nice because of the quantum hall that i don't have to have additional contacts or wires going to the central reservoir because the edges itself are current carrying wires which goes in and out and that's that's the trick actually that's that gives us this amazing handle to know the delta p the power that we dissipate to such accuracy yeah any, any other questions? questions all right let's thank the, the speaker again